What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the switch statement in PHP. The switch statement is another control structure that PHP provides to help you with decision making for your scripts and programs. It's similar to the if else conditional control structure and learning how to use the switch statement is definitely something you want to do. Alright so if you haven't done so already make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon so whenever I create new videos you'll be notified. And as always, Code snippets can be found on my website, picksomeweb.com. Just go to the PHP section and click on the tutorial that we'll be covering in this video, which is the PHP switch statement. I'll also be leaving a link to the tutorial in the description area down below. So definitely check that out. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna copy this code right here. I'm gonna go to VS Code, and right now I'm inside of my PHP project, and what I wanna do is create a new file. So there's a couple of ways we can go about doing this. You can click the new file icon over here. You can go to File, New File, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, Control N, or you can open up your terminal, and you could even just type out Touch, switch.php and that's the name I'm going to be giving to this file. So by doing this in the terminal, you now create the switch.php file within your folder structure. And you see here where I'm currently at. So now you can open up that file either by clicking on the file name over here or on Windows you can type out start the name of the file and then it'll open it up inside your editor. If you're on a Mac then instead of start you're going to use the keyword or command open and then the name of the file. Okay so what I'm going to do here so I'm going to paste in that code that I copied over from my website. Let me get rid of the sidebar here and I'm going to close off the terminal for now. All right, so let's go over some of this code here. On line one, you see we open up our PHP tag. And on line two, we created a variable called color and we assigned it the value of blue. So now what we did here is on line four, we created our switch statement. And inside the parentheses, what we're testing against is the variable color. And then outside of our parentheses, we open up our curly braces. And then with a the switch statement, you have what's called a case. We have our first case over here and this is what it's testing against. If the color variable, if the value assigned to that is purple, then we're going to echo out your color is purple. And then you see we have the break part of the statement over here on line 7. Now if purple is not the value assigned to our variable color, then we're going to go to the next case. Very similar to an if, else if, and then else type conditional control structure. So if this is false, then we'll go down here and say case green. So if the color is green, then we're going to echo out your color is green. And then we'll break over here as well on line 10. And we're going to do the same until we get a true condition or until a case evaluates to the value of the variable. And then if none of these are true or if none of these are the correct color, then we're going to have a default statement at the bottom where we echo out, I can't figure out your color. All right, so let's see how this works within our terminal. So we could always try this out in the browser, but what I find for some of these tutorials, sometimes for the very simple demonstrations of code, I like just out putting it to the terminal down below. It makes it a lot easier to show you the results. So what I'm going to do here is I'll type out PHP space and then the name of the file that I want to process. Then hit enter. Then it says your color is blue. So if you go up here on line two, you see the variable color the value is blue. So we bypassed purple, green, and black and we had the final value being blue. Alright so now what I want to do is show you what happens if you don't have this break part of the conditional check here. Let's say you skip that or you leave it out for whatever reason. So I'm going to cut purple out of here. I'm going to put blue to be the very first case up here. Then I'll put purple down here. But what I'm going to do now is I will just comment out the breaks over here. Then I'm going to save that. I'll go back down to the terminal. I'll hit the up arrow and I'll test that out. And as you can see, it says your color is purple, your color is green, your color is black, and your color is blue. Now, why did that happen? Well, what happened here was since we didn't have a break, the way the switch control structure works is that it's going to go line by line or statement by statement and check the values. So we know that blue is the value assigned to color. And theoretically, if we would have left this 
uncommented, the switch statement would have stopped at that point. But since break was commented out, it kept on processing down each case. And sometimes that could be a bug in your code, or sometimes that could actually be a feature, depending on how you want to set up your code. So you definitely want to have the break in each statement, so that way you get the intended result of what you're trying to achieve. And then we have the default down below. Now, you don't always need to have a default statement at the bottom, just like you don't always have to have an else with an if conditional check. But more often than not, you're going to see that the default statement will be there. So that way you can output some type of information. All right, let's go back to the browser so we can grab a comparison of the switch statement to the if conditional. So here we have a further breakdown of what's happening with the code. You can definitely check that out. Now, let's take a look at the actual if statement over here where we're going to get the same results but in a different way of processing that data. Let's go back to VS Code. All right, so let me close off my terminal real quick. I'm going to go to another part of the editor over here and I'll paste that in. All right, so I can just remove these opening and closing PHP tags since I already have a PHP tag opened at the top. And it's typically good form not to have a final PHP closing tag at the bottom if your code is going to just be outputting or just dealing with PHP. All right, so here we're doing something similar, right? Let me make this a little bit smaller so that way we can fit both of them in here. All right, so we see that the color is blue still for color. And on top where we have a switch statement, on the bottom we have the if else conditional checks. They're both going to produce the same results and let's check that out within the term. Terminal. Hit the up arrow and Houston we have a problem. You see here it says your color is purple and then your color is blue. Reason why that's happening is because up here remember we changed the first option over here case blue which previously was purple up here. Hence why we got your color is purple. So let's put that back to purple. Then we'll go down here and put this back to blue. Save that. In the terminal hit the up arrow again. And now you see your color is blue and your color is blue. Same results. All right, so let's go over the code again. They're very similar, right? I mean, you kind of have to get used to playing with both of them and working with both of them to determine which style you're going to be using based on your situation or based on the types of conditions you're looking to evaluate. Now, the switch statement does perform a little bit faster because it evaluates the value just one time versus the if else, which checks the condition more than one time. But the performance is not noticeable in real time unless you're talking about a very complex program. So that's the switch statement in a nutshell. It's very similar to the if else conditional control structure. One of the benefits is that people do find that the switch statement can be easier to read. But again, that goes into code formatting and most programmers like to format their code in different ways. So play around with the switch statement. Try to refactor some of your if, else if, and else conditional statements to match a switch and check to see if the switch statement might be a little bit more performance for your particular piece of code. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Smash that notification icon. If you have any thoughts, comments, or suggestions, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching and happy coding.